Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 22. And he said to his disciples, Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch, or in the third, and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's message will focus on the words we just heard from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, where Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. I think this is a common thing for us to say in our world today. This, this, this exact phrase we, we could say any number of times today in 21st century America. But as I thought about this verse, the more I thought about it, the more I began to wonder if maybe when we say this, we mean something a little different than what Jesus is saying now. It's easy to jump to conclusions about a phrase when you're used to saying it. Life is more than food and the clothing that you wear. We know that, right? We might not agree on the meaning of life among us if we were to take a poll, but we uh, we all agree probably that it's not food. So instead, you'll, you'll commonly hear in our world today things like, Family is everything. Family is everything. Or it's not what you have, it's who you are with. We might say the same about friendship, right? Many others in our culture will focus on, upon the impact of their life when they're seeking meaning for what they're doing, whether they're making a difference, whether they're being the best version of themselves for the world around them. Just the other day, Ewan McGregor, the celebrity, He told me in an Expedia commercial, it's not family, it's not the impact I'm making, it's the places that I've been. 
the places you'll go, you might say, the experiences you might experience. When we ask what gives life meaning, these are the kind of answers we give, and these are the kind of answers that we find acceptable. I mean, no matter how much I like coffee, most of you probably would not accept the answer, coffee gives life meaning. Neither video games, right, or believe it or not, the 1996 Chicago Bulls. No, even they do not give meaning, though my seven-year-old self might have been very surprised. Yeah, and yes, older members, I was seven in 1996. I'll give you a moment to let that sink in and then go on. Yeah, the point point I'm making is family, friends, and even experiences, these are the acceptable places to find meaning. Meaning. It's the acceptable places that we all say that makes sense to find meaning there. But the question I want to ask is, is Jesus making this kind of distinction when he says life is more than food and the body more than clothing? I don't think so. I think Jesus is saying something much more profound, and we're just so removed from the realities of life in Jesus' day that it's hard for us to hear this like a first-century Jewish person would, because we don't worry about food in America. The vast majority of the time, we don't need to worry about how we're going to eat our next meal. We worry about what? we're going to eat, what we want to eat, right? Likewise, we don't worry about how we're going to afford the clothes that we're going to put on our back or manage to sew them together somehow, though if gas prices keep going up, maybe that'll change. No, even then, we know that stuff will probably work itself out. Even if sometimes we have nothing we want to wear or nothing that we want to eat, we know a quick trip to the store or the restaurant will fix that. And if money is tight, we know that there are places like Goodwills that are overstocked with clothing that we could have in a pinch. And there's many similar organizations like food banks that'll take care of us in any number of ways that an average first person, first century Jewish person couldn't even imagine. So when Jesus says life is more than food and the body more than clothing, he's not setting up some kind of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, where we take care of the basics and then we can move on to the higher order things like social connection and fulfillment, meaning. He's not talking about the difference between flourishing and just barely getting by, he's talking about life and death, survival, all of life. Listen to what he says next. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? As Jesus encourages us to recognize that life is more than food and clothing, he's waging war against worry, anxiety. And worry is is so powerful. But he points out ravens, they don't have storehouses, they don't have barns, those things that you make when you're worried, when you're trying to plan for tomorrow and figure things out and make, make defenses against the bad things that could happen. Ravens, they just gather. They go out and gather today, and if they don't get enough food today, they'll be a little hungry, but they'll go out and gather tomorrow. They're opportunistic, yeah, but they're, they're always just gathering. But note that Jesus doesn't even give them credit for that. He gives the credit to God. They neither sow nor reap. They don't do the hard work, the, the work that should earn them credit, that should merit them their food. Who is it that feeds them? It's God that feeds them. 
And the implication that Jesus offers to us, if we're willing to accept it, is God will feed you too. Just like the ravens, God's going to feed you too. Maybe even if you don't work very hard for it. Why? Because you are valued. As Jesus says, of how much more value are you than the birds? You are valued, so of course you're going to be fed. You're going to get what you need for this life. And then Jesus continues with another example. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And with this second example, Jesus isn't just repeating himself, he's going further. Because these lilies in the field are not just collecting scraps like a raven often would. Lilies aren't wearing hand-me-downs. They're not going to goodwill. These lilies are richly and extravagantly dressed. They're more extravagantly dressed than Solomon in all his glory. Solomon, the king of Israel, the most, most wealthy individual in Israel's entire history, lilies beat him in the fashion contest. With this statement, Jesus isn't moving beyond, is moving beyond a discussion of what we deserve. Because lilies, Jesus says, don't do any work for what they wear, but they're still clothed. And as he moves beyond a discussion of what we deserve, he's moving beyond a discussion of bare needs too. Because lilies don't have just what they need to wear. Lilies are extravagantly dressed. And what's the implication? It's that you, likewise, will be extravagantly dressed. And I know we're wearing our Sunday best this morning, right? But, but even that is not like a lily, right? So what's going on? I'm supposed to be fabulously dressed and all I've got is this, this white robe on. Well... There's a deeper question here which we could ask. We will be clothed richly, extravagantly. Even we who have not worked for the clothing that we will wear, even we of little faith to take that last line. We will be clothed. But Jesus is talking about something more than cotton, isn't he? But because that is the case, Jesus says in the next section, can we get our next slide? Do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Don't seek these things. Don't be worried. Seek the kingdom. Here's where we get to the point of everything Jesus has said so far. What is the meaning of life? I'm telling you this morning. Jesus is telling you this morning. Seek the kingdom. Everything else is going to work itself out. Everything else will be added to you. Your father knows that you need all that stuff, but now... Most of all, seek the kingdom. That stuff might not come today, might not come tomorrow, but he will take care of them. It's this freedom, this confident faith, this assurance that is the foundation of everything else that we do. Because we know he's going to take care of us. Because we know he values and loves us. Because we as Christians today know Jesus died for us, we seek the kingdom. But don't miss that other part, nor be worried. Don't be worried. 
Because worry is powerful. Worry is, is dangerous. When our meet needs are met as a matter of course, and by and large in America they are, aren't they? Worry doesn't stop. Worry just keeps on going, doesn't it? I don't need to worry about food, and I don't need to worry about clothing, and I don't need to worry about drink, but man, I've got a lot of other things on my mind that keep on running through. And then worry begins to stretch the definition of need, saying, well, I don't only need a car to get to work and to get around. I need a nice car so I can impress my clients. I not only need a car to get to work and to get around, I need a big old pickup truck for those three times a year that I need to haul something. Worry says I not only need a shelter to live in, I need a nice strong house of the finest materials that'll last a long time. I need a security system to protect all that stuff that I have in that nice strong house and to keep my family safe too, of course. I need a big yard so my kids can play and grow strong and be healthy. I not only need food, but I need food quick today, but not from one of those junky restaurants. I need good food, healthy food that'll keep me strong. I need organic, grass-fed, antibiotic, cage-free, fat-free, GMO-free, gluten-free, pasture-raised, artisanal, homemade, fair trade, keto, paleo, all-natural, no preservatives, locally grown, probiotic, prebiotic, antioxidant, superfood that will keep me and mine healthy. Right? That's what worry says to us today. And the advertisers know it, don't they? They feed into that, slide into the gaps of your worry. Sometimes they create new worries for us, right? We didn't know we were worried about having too much of that in our food, but now we are. I joke, but I'm not immune to these fears, feelings, desires, and worries. These same kind of thoughts run through my head and tempt me to seek something other than the kingdom. to focus on, obsess over something other than the kingdom. Well, to us and all our inclinations to worry, whatever they may be, Jesus says simply, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What incredible good news. We're we're given a job, seek the kingdom, one which should lead us to worry. I mean, how do you even do that? And in the very next breath, Jesus says, but don't worry, fear not, the kingdom is given freely. I mean, imagine you're worried how in the world you're going to eat anything tomorrow drink anything tomorrow, wear anything tomorrow. You have not a penny to your name, you don't have a house over your head, you don't have anything at all, and someone comes by and hands you the keys to a mansion, a million dollar check, or or for Sam, a tiny house. I mean, that's the situation Jesus is describing today. That's the situation. Fear not, it's given freely. How could we be worried when the Father has handed us a kingdom? And there's so much more that could and should be said. There's lots more, there's lots more verses that follow. But I'll stop at verse 32 and encourage you to simply remember. Don't worry. Your faith, your seeking after the kingdom, though, isn't just psychological help. It's not just gravy on the top of your life, nice to have, one of a many nice to have things that are kind of a bonus once everything else is taken care of. No, your faith, seeking the kingdom, for you, that is essential. It's the most important thing at every level of life. It's better than food, better than drink, better than clothes, better than shelter, security systems, new trucks, and yes, even the 1996 Chicago Bulls and it's given freely. The kingdom is given freely. 
without any merit or worthiness in you at all. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.